Sure. Um, you know, great, great series win. Thought that, you know, it was going to come down to some toughness plays today. And uh, that's a very good opponent. You can see why, you know, they uh, found their way to the World Series last year. They can pitch. They defend. They put pressure on you with the bunt. And uh, they just try to find ways to score. So we, were, we needed to play well in all phases. And I thought it's exactly what we did. We, um, we pitched out of some jams, specifically with Tristan Smith picking up uh, Willie Weiss in a jam where he came into the bases loaded and really minimized, only, only allowed one run to score that inning. And then obviously Nick Clayton coming in uh, after the first two runners got on of that inning and uh, doing what he did, facing 10 hitters and really minimizing as well. He's been super effective this year. Uh, in the, some of the defensive plays we made behind him, Riley Bertram's unassisted double play was just another how to win awareness type of a play, which he's so good at, such a high IQ type of a player. Uh, and then the timely hitting, you know, Billy Amick's uh, entire week, really, you know, really the last couple weeks. But uh, this weekend, he's just been uh, one heck of a clutch hitter and none bigger than a two strike, two out double to take the lead in the eighth, followed up then by Riley Bertram's two out double to score Billy to give us a two run cushion. So pitching, defense, timely hitting, that's the recipe. That's uh, a recipe for championship baseball. It's a recipe for postseason baseball. And so very happy, uh, very pleased that uh, our team is playing better in those areas because uh, that's what it's going to take. We've uh, we've been playing better. It feels like it, and uh, we'll need to keep it up because we've got a lot of work to do still. Questions for players? Totally incredible week for you. Uh, eight hits, four doubles, two home runs. How good does it feel to play your way into a regular starting spot? Uh, yeah, I thought we played really well today, and uh, this weekend we hit the ball when we needed to on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Um, our approach, I think, has been very good this whole weekend, and. Uh, just really know what we have to do. Um, really trying to get our job done and uh, just pass the baton on. Can you take us through that last out bet? You were on two and then kind of hung on with a foul and, and were patient enough to, to get the pitch you wanted for the, for the go ahead double. Yeah, like I said, we just, uh, we just try to pass the baton along uh, in those situations, just try to get it to the next man, uh, see what we can do, and see if we can get started. I guess, Nick, um, you've had seven other scoreless innings going back to Florida State, I think three wins now. So um, why do you think this long relief role has fit you so well? Um, we just really had a good game plan going into games, honestly. Uh, like yesterday didn't go exactly like we wanted, but Coach Bellinger and I just got together and made one small adjustment. It's made the world, so. I guess, obviously, you were a starter before. Now you're coming out of the panic. Is there any difference in the approach? Um, a little bit. Um, I would say that coming out in relief is a little bit more pressure, but I mean that's what you come to Clemson for. So, Nick, how good did it feel for you to be a part of history yesterday with Coach Buggett? Uh He's incredible. I mean, he's one of a kind. Never been around somebody with that much energy, so much all the time. Um, brings it every day. He's just a great guy, great mentor. What do you guys think of his impromptu slide there? Oh, before you it's incredible. Play? Incredible. EB even said he was going to do it, but <laughs> they, deep down, I didn't really think he'd do it. <laughs> Any more questions for players? All right, thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. Stay here. All right, questions for coaches? Coach, you uh, gave Pizzetta a chance. You only had one hit all season, but you gave him, so gave him a chance today. How good would you see him come through with that, that one out double tie the game there in the second? It was great. You know, he's an awesome teammate. He's been encouraging everyone else. You know, we've kind of had a revolving door in right field for most of the year anyways. So uh, to see these guys step in and have quality at bats, you know, Jack Crichton with a couple of hard hit balls yesterday and then Tristan Bassetta getting in there today with an RBI double in his first at bat. You know, we'll continue to platoon guys. Nate Hall's a, an elite player as well. He's got a bright future. All these guys, we just got to keep getting their, uh, you know, keep giving them experience, keep giving them opportunities. Uh, and we just, you know, we may continue to do that. And when Jacob Gerald catches, Cooper Engel goes to right. But to see those guys contribute in a positive way is awesome because they're all great teammates. And that's ultimately why they keep getting uh, the chances out there.
it's it's a critical transition, um, and I think what gets lost in here is you know a lot of times seniors they they are sort of they're set you know they are who they are they're, they're it's their fourth or fifth year and you know sometimes there there can be a little rigidity and and reluctancy to make adjustments and he made a wholesale change it's not like he made a minor adjustment to drop down to a low three quarter sinker baller he completely changed his delivery and his arm slot just because he didn't have much success last year as a starter he wasn't having success in the fall in the preseason and so this was something that he was willing to do with Coach Bellinger to just find a way to contribute. We didn't know that it was going to turn into what it's turned into, but what it's turned into is a, an elite reliever with outlier numbers and metrics on the movement of his pitch. I mean, it's a turbo sinker with a ridiculous amount of arm side run paired with a slider that goes in the other direction. And, you know, there's a reason why he, he has so many uncomfortable at bats for the opposition. Coupled with a you know very good mindset and a great competitor and a great teammate, it's easy to see why that he's having success. But in, to get to the success, he had to make a big time adjustment, and not many guys in, at his age would be willing to do that. But it's paid huge dividends for him and for us. Well, you, it, it's got to be a, it's got to be a really good athlete who's got really good body control, who's also um, a strike thrower. Um, you know, it's just one thing to say, hey, throwing over the top's not working, let's just drop down. But uh, it's another thing when you have the body control and body awareness to be able to do that and throw strikes with it. Uh, so we were just trying to give the opposition just a different look, just a, you know, more of a challenging angle from here. Uh, we didn't realize at the time that it would produce the movement that it's produced. So uh, I'm really happy for Nick. Um, you know, he's, he's got a bright future as a pitcher. I mean, that, those types of numbers are, are really, really good. And uh, I'm talking about the movement on his ball. It's really good. Sorry. Coach, you, uh, you won five out of your last six now, back-to-back -back ACC series. Did you feel like this team kind of turned a bit of a corner down to Tallahassee when you won that series? Yeah, if, uh, we played well against Coastal Carolina before that. And, we, you know, we really – we I know we lost three games to Wake, but we didn't necessarily play bad. Um, you know, they were just better than us. Uh, but we played well. And so it feels like the last few weeks we have, we have been playing better. And ultimately, that's what it's all about. Um, because we've dug ourselves such a hole that we just need to reduce everything down to the moment. And whatever we're doing at that time is the most important thing. And, uh, and really just, just play good baseball. And know that when we do that, the results typically are going to be in our favor. So it's good to see our guys you know, kind of shrink it down to just being locked in on the moment and taking it one game and one pitch at a time. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're halfway through ACC play, and it feels good, though, to know that we're getting more confident. We are playing better. We figured out some roles. We've got guys that are returning. Uh, Casey Talent pitched today, uh, even though he maybe didn't have the success that he's capable of having, but he's back out there. and. Ryan Ammons was hot twice in the bullpen, ready to go in. Um, so he's he's back and he's ready. Uh, so you know it feels like things, the pieces are starting to come together. Uh, but you know, make no mistake, we still have a lot of work to do. But it feels like we're on the right trajectory right now. Yeah, it was good. Uh, he's, I think his pitching has certainly helped his hitting. There's no question about it. Anytime you can kind of declutter your mind and, and be able to separate and be able to focus on two things, um, it's good for him because he's, he's such a – he's so blessed. He's got just God-given natural ability that's off the charts. Uh, and so when he can just rely on that ability, that natural ability, and just go play and play mentally free – uh, I think he's got, you know, he's one of those guys, and there's only a few out there that, that could be a two-way player at the highest level, and he's one of those guys. Uh, he's just got that natural ability. So I think for him to get out of the outfield, get into the infield was a big step uh, just to keep him more engaged with the defense. 
uh, but then getting back to the mound and having a whole nother thing, whole nother area to focus on has really just unlocked his offense as well because he's not overthinking it. He's just going out there and playing, and trusting his ability, and um, we see the success he's having. It's great to see him have an awesome bounce back year, and uh, we're going to continue to count on him because he's one of the best players not only on our team but in the country. Really well executed hit and run there. You know, I think it was in the first with Engel um, leading the time run. How, how good was it to see them execute that? It was just a straight steal. Um, so yeah, yeah. I wish I could tell you it was a it was a, some brilliant play call, but it was just a steal. And thought we had a good time to the plate that that Cam could could steal the base and and um, you know Cooper did a good job of getting a pitch he could handle and. So you know, anytime we can uh, we can go first or third like that, that's that's big time. But I like your idea. It was a great hit and run. It was, uh, you know, we practiced it all week and pulled it off perfectly. Yeah. It's kind of out of left field, but I don't mean to ask you. Uh, Major League outlaw the the shift. Um, you, you like to go to it from time to time. What, what do you think about that? Would you like to see the college move away from the shift or keep it? Uh, I mean, I you know, I haven't really thought about it much. I I like being aggressive with the shift just to try to position our defense where we think the ball is going to go and we've been the benefactors of you know utilizing the shift to our advantage so I guess we'll find out of you know what are the restrictions within the shift how far can you go over and how you know but uh, I haven't I didn't know that I haven't I don't watch much TV but I'll have to uh, I'll have to check that out because usually the the whatever happens at the major league level trickles down to college so I'm sure that that's going to be outlawed at the college level at some point in the next year or two is Brian coming back in a relief role I mean how open still is the rotation in terms of trying to figure out that third guy obviously you have Katie and Cam Austin or how open is it still in terms of figuring out that yeah Ethan Darden has, has had some good starts for us especially in the midweek, and he, he did well at Florida State. Um, so I think we'll, we'll run him back out there. I mean, Caden would be the guy to throw on Friday night, uh, but we just don't want to do that because we want him to play first base the first two games. Um, but we also like having him on Sunday, too. He's, it's a good feeling going into a series, knowing we're going to try to win the series or sweep a series with Caden Grice on a Sunday. Um, but yeah, I think I'd say anything is, is, is open. Um, you know, some meritocracy, and if guys keep pitching well, and we'll keep running them out there on the as starters. If not, we'll, we'll try to find other guys to give us give us a look. But we we like what Darden's done. He's he's held his own. He's got a good sinking fastball. He's done well. So uh, we'll keep running him out there in the starting role. But uh, Ammons, we we will not use as a starter unless it was an opener. We might use him as an opener for a, an inning or two. But I think his best value is the back end. Absolutely. I mean, we have taken so many punches this year and traded blows so many times that it has. It's calloused our mind. I mean, it's no big deal now to to have lead changes back and forth and to play from a deficit and to play in tight games. It's like, yeah, so what? Here, you know, this is what we do every game. It feels like uh, so. You know, there's no deficit that we feel like we can't come from behind and. With all the leads, there's still that because we've blown leads already this season. There's still that urgency to keep the pedal down, and uh, so I like I like that for this team. I like that that's part of our journey, and I think it will only help us as we get into the second half of ACC play. All right, thank you, coach. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate. It.